This is the world's smallest Game Boy Advance SP that uses the original motherboard. Now, I know this thing looks pretty cute, but it was a challenge to put together. It's called the Gotcha SP, and it was designed by Joseph Tompkins and Jonas, aka Retro Game Evo, and PCB Way, who is the sponsor of this video, kindly manufactured the parts that I needed and sent them my way. PCB Way manufactures, of course, PCBs, like the one for this project, but it also does 3D printing and CNC machining services. If you can see I have a 3D printer back there, but for this project I wanted resin material and I don't have a resin 3D printer. I'll be sure to link Joseph and Jonas's Gotcha SP files in the description below. So when I got the parts in the mail and unpackaged it, my first impression was the packaging is exceptional and the quality of the parts were really good. Now the resin front plate did come warped a little bit, but if that happens you should be able to heat it up and mold it into the right shape. But I still let PCB Way know about that part and they sent me another resin front plate and that one was perfect. Perfectly fine. Now, in addition to the parts that I got from PCB Way, I still needed a Game Boy Advance SP motherboard, and I needed some new button triggers to solder onto the new PCB. If your work is flawless, you just need eight, but I ordered a pack of 100, and I think I used up a lot of them in the process, but they were just a couple dollars on AliExpress. You're also gonna need the back shell, power switch, and triggers from your Game Boy Advance as well. And a funny playing backlight display. I'll have the specific one linked in the description. So of course, the first step is to disassemble your Game Boy Advance SP. There's plenty of tutorials on YouTube if you're not sure how to do that. Just be careful not to lose your screws. And once you have the back shell and motherboard extracted, you can just set those to the side and then solder on the button pads to the new PCB. Originally, I thought I could do it with a normal soldering iron, but after like 30 minutes, I don't think I managed to get a single one soldered on correctly. So I caved and bought one of these hot pads on Amazon. This one ended up being just the right size for what I needed. I was able to go ahead and pre tin the solder pads, put a bunch of flux on, and position the button pads how I wanted. And then I put it on top of this thing and they just fell right into place. So now it's time to solder the new PCB to the Game Boy Advance SP motherboard. I highly recommend using different colored wires for this, otherwise you'll end up like me and just have a mess of just the same color everywhere and it'll be really hard to see what goes where. Now in Jonas's guide on PCB Way, there's a photo showing where to solder, so that was super helpful for me. At this point, I would do some more testing again, but this time I put in a test cartridge on the Game Boy Advance SP and connected the display just to make sure that everything actually is working. Now, originally I was planning to use the Hispedo laminated display, but I found out it actually does not fit with this project because the bezel on the bottom goes down a little bit too far. So I bought this funny playing laminated backlight display and it ended up fitting just fine. So for connecting the display, it's actually pretty simple. You just have to connect the PCB that the kit comes with, with the display and then connect the display to the motherboard. Since the final product of the Gotcha SP does not have a brightness button, I thought I needed to solder a wire so that I can adjust the brightness to where I wanted before I close it up. But the kit actually has a touch sensor that you can use so you can adjust the brightness anyway. And soldering that wire for brightness actually is not needed. Now, since the Gotcha SP is super compact, you actually have to cut the membrane on the start and select buttons and the D-pad. You can always cut off more, so just cut a little bit at a time until it fits how it's supposed to. Now, I had the buttons 3D printed by PCB Way, but I think original Game Boy Advance SP buttons would work as well, but I thought it'd be cool to go with the 3D printed ones anyway. Now, there's a couple of screws that you need to put in. Be sure not to be too forceful because the resin print is pretty delicate and it'd be pretty easy to strip the screw posts. So now let's set the display in the front part of the shell and then get this middle piece positioned as well. And then now it's time to put the back shell on and I actually couldn't get it to sit flush. So I'm not sure if I put it together exactly how it was supposed to be, but everything works how it's supposed to. So this is definitely a really cool project, but it does come with plenty of cons. One of which you might have already noticed, and it is there is no speaker. Now I'm pretty sure you can add a speaker, but I haven't given it a try yet. And I would be lying if I said this was an easy project. Now supposedly there is some flex PCB out there that will allow you to solder the buttons without wires, but I couldn't find where to order it when I was looking for it. And this project is definitely not for beginners. There's wires galore and really tricky soldering with the button pads. I mean, heck, I was melting them when I was trying to use a soldering iron and I had to buy that hot plate, which did make the process a lot easier. But with all that said, this is still a super cool project and I'm really glad to have the world's smallest Game Boy Advance SP in my hands.